Hello my dear friends, I welcome you all to our channel Best Notes Tutorials. I am Lieutenant Roshni Shah and today the novel which I have for you all is extremely, you know, flourished in India as well as in the world and this is written by Mulk Raj Anand. Yes, I am talking about the very famous novel Kuli and this is second novel of Mulk Raj Anand after Untouchable. This was published in the year 1936 and Untouchable was published in the year 1935. So we are going to talk a lot about Kuli in this video. Dear audience, before I start with the explanation, my heartfelt request to each one of you to kindly share the video so that the students who are there in search of something productive will get the video and they will score more in their examination. Without much ado, let's start with the explanation now. And now I'll talk about Mulkaraj Anand and his biography. He was born on 12th of December. You can easily remember this month is 12th and the date is also 12th. Okay. And the year was 1905, 1905, the year of partition of India. He was born in undivided India, that is Peshawar which is now in Pakistan and he died on 28th of September 2004 in Pune. Now see, there are so many novels which he has penned. Okay, when I talk about this, the first one is Untouchable. Second one is the one which we are going to explain that is Kuli. Next comes The Big Heart, The Sword, and the sickle and many more but the very prominent one are these two that is untouchable and the kuli now kuli is our topic for today uh, let's move to the summary of this novel dear friends when we go through the novel it grabs all our attention and all our senses into it because the kind of explanation mulkaraj anand has done it makes it so realistic that we involve our all senses into it and then we feel the pain of that little boy of 14 years. Friends, Mulkaraj Anand never left us alone. He has taken us to the Indianness, to the soil of India and the society which the kind of situation is seen in Indian society. He projects all that. Friends, the themes that Mulk Raj Anand has used or implemented here in this novel are suppression. Suppression by upper caste to lower caste. Suppression by elite people to uh, poor people. Next, exploitation. Exploitation by all the wealthy haves category of people of society and this, you know, um, intolerance towards poverty is not see, seen anywhere in the novel. Next comes power of money. Those who are in power, they exploit it. They misuse it. Okay, it's not that they are giving it to poor people, poor, you know, child's education and upgrading the overall scenario of our society. Nobody thinks in that way. They want to be rich because they don't, you know, by being rich, they have created a demarcation, a boundary around them so that nobody can intrude inside their regime. This is so bad. When we earn money, when we get educated, we should spread it. All right. So this kind of nature is not seen in uh, then society fortunately now with the help of social media with the help of you know good moral lessons by our parents by our teachers we are trying to do that we are trying to spread knowledge we are trying to make people know more about our society its grievances and work on it unfortunately during that period this was not seen therefore the main theme is so much uh, you know touchy of this novel and as I told you these are suppression, exploitation, poverty, power of money etc. After the theme let's move to the characters. 
the protagonist of the novel is munu m u n o o munu munu is just a 14 year old boy one four fourteen year old boy and you know in in this novel he has gone through very troublesome life his life is full of turbulences and nobody sympathizes with him nobody is able to empathize all right so what were his problems and who all helped him where he was happy we will find out all right but i'll tell you in order to you know remember you have to think of a very ideal hindi movie where we see these kind of torches a small boy who is given task who is very poor who is given task and he earns a little bit of money but that also goes to somebody else so that is the story of munu let us discuss chapter wise friends in order to understand in a clear way i must tell you that in the novel there are so many incidences which happens in different places okay chapter wise chapter 1 in some place chapter 2 3 4 5 in that way all right i'll be explaining each and everything don't worry at all let me tell you about munu munu is from bilaspur and bilaspur is a hilly area okay it is in himachal pradesh friends in this novel we see munu's life from 14 year till his death so in this 2 two, two and a half year of duration what all hellish plight he had to undergo we will see friends when the novel opens we see very lively munu munu though he is very poor and he is an orphan he is able to make his life so much enchanting so much lively that he enjoys each and every moment of his life he does not have money he doesn't have you know that power to eat what he wants he doesn't have power to wear what he wants but still he has made his life so much you know lively that he is very much seen loving his life irrespective of his poverty friends manu very much knows that why and how his father and his mother had died father had taken some debt from zamindar and he was not able to pay off all those loans therefore he had snatched zamindar had snatched his land and because of this father had died his mother expired by working in a grinding mill you must have seen during old days they used to grind um everything okay be it spices be it uh some grain they used to grind it in two slabs of stone all right and it was very laborious task and without having food it is very difficult to put in energy so because of that mother had died at a very tender age munu knows this reason and he is deadly against zamindar presently he is staying with uncle and aunt friends please note down the characters which are coming across the story uncle's name is dayaram and he is a clerk at shamnagar in a bank okay the name of the bank is imperial bank and auntie's name is gujri g u j r i gujri okay now these two uh, people have no children therefore they are childless dear audience we find dayaram to be very insensitive here because he has decided to put munu for some work and he finds accountant of his office appropriate for the same and he puts munu in his house so that he can do some household chores friends munu was so happy because he was now shifting from bilaspur to city all right and he had heard so much about the town that in city people eat well people wear good clothes all right and even children have a lot of toys to play they go for partying they go for visiting parks 
they play different games etc so being a child he had so much of attraction towards this and he was extremely happy throughout his journey but unfortunately he did not know that what is waiting for him in city friends another thing we must notice is that villagers are very innocent people and they are gullible easily gullible people because when dayaram was in village he had befooled so many villagers and he used to think that he is the boss of the village but he was just a clerk in a bank so when he switched you know when he shifts to another place that is shamnagar to put munu for work all right chapter 2 begins so chapter end stops or ends when they start their journey towards shamnagar all right so here when he reaches to shamnagar we see there is utter change in the behavior of the yaram because he was now so much submissive and he was so much polite to everyone because he himself knows that in city there are so many people who are very much educated than him and holding good position friends we must note down the name of this accountant and it is nathuram nathuram okay now his wife is uttam kaur and she is extremely reckless mannerless lady she is always furious she is always scolding people for different minor reasons all right so here we find her to be very much strict but for arbitrary reasons her name is uttam kaur friends there are three more characters in chapter 2 and they are nathuram's daughter laila and sheela okay laila and sheela then prem babu is the brother of nathuram prem babu is a doctor mbbs holder now we will move to chapter 3 friends before moving to chapter 3 let me conclude chapter 2 by saying this that when he started his journey from bilaspur in chapter 1 he was full of enthusiasm all right but when he came to uh, the house of nathuram in chapter 2 um, by look, you know by uh, experiencing the behavior of uttam kaur who was very filthy lady all right filthy by words uh, we experience that the charm the hope of munu disappeared he understood that how his life going to be in this bungalow friends munu's struggle starts here in this house and he was treated as if he was matured he knows everything but it was not true he had just come from village and he hardly knows how to do anything in a very disciplined way so whatever task was given to him whether it was cooking tea whether it was arranging things all right he was not able to do it properly because he did not uh, you know he has no habit of doing that he is not an expert in any of the things that we do in house so now and then uttam kaur got very furious and uh, munu used to get scolded and one after the other when he was reprimanded all right then he lost his hope and finally he wanted to escape from this house friends see even if there is a child who has done so many things in his house then it would be comfortable for him to work anywhere but uh, you know a child like munu who was unskilled it was very difficult and he had come for some other purpose if he would have come for earning money he would have survived in this house but it was not so he had come to have merriment he had come to have good food good clothing etc so his hopes and aspirations you know smashed just in a fraction of second so even he was not able to accept these things life had become very much difficult for little munu now what happens ahead let's find out friends in this house of nathuram 
there is only one member who is slightly able to understand or empathize with Munu and that is Prem Babu. Prem Babu who is MBBS. Okay. Now, Prem Babu gives, you know, sometimes uh, some used things for him to play like Blade. Okay. So, that also finds so much importance in the life of Munu because nobody had shown such attachment in his uh, at least in this house towards him now we see another person in the novel and his name is mr england okay by the name itself we understand that he is a foreigner and uh, there are so many things that we indians do in order to make ourselves look or you know seen very important in society all right like being with white people uh, speaking English, all right, wearing English clothes, etc. The same thing happens here when Mr. England, okay, who works in bank arrives, he invites him to his house, all right, but something weird happens because of which Munro had to leave the house. Now, what was the incident? See, friends, when Mr. England comes to the house of Nathuram and Uttam Kaur, Mr. England was very much disappointed, very much angry rather, to see the mannerism of Munu. Munu had no rules and regulations. He was so much, uh, you know, in his way. Indian people, they are okay, you know, with eating habits. They don't use spoon, fork, etc. When Munu ate sweets with his hands, he, were, he became so much irritated and started scolding Munu. Friends, one day, Leila and Sila, both of them were playing. And even Munu wanted to join because he was just a boy of 14, 15 years. All right. So when he joined, he wanted to show monkey jump to these girls. And accidentally, he kissed one of the daughters. Okay, of Nathuram and Uttam Kaur. And Nathuram sees that and beats Munu severely. Friends, here the kind of torture we see is so much disheartening. And what had happened, I'll tell you. Munu was beaten with belt of Nathuram. And at this point of time, Nath uh, Munu decides to leave the house of Anathuram and Uttam Kaur and leave from this house in order to save his life. So he does that. But before doing that, he complains it to complains to Dayaram so that he can do something. But Dayaram says that you are always complaining about your masters. This is not correct. They are good people and they are paying you five rupees. Okay, but this five rupees was taken away by Dayaram every month. It never went to Munu's pocket. So, you know, it was the result of all these injustice that we see uh, Munu, you know, experiencing. And what happens? He leaves from this house altogether. He leaves and escapes from this house. Friends, when Munu leaves their house, chapter 2 ends. And we see another place in chapter 3 that is Dalatpur. Okay, so first was from Bilaspur to Shamnagar and from Shamnagar to Dalatpur. We will see. All right, uh, chapter 1 and 2 ends here, and rest of the story we will do in our next video. So, friends, till then, take care and please keep on asking questions so that I can clear your doubts. Happy learning, friends. All the best for your examination.